Welcome to another video, Purple Political Talk here, and today we're going to be doing a best case scenario video for Donald Trump and looking at what would be the things that need to happen for Donald Trump to get a best case scenario. So we're going to fill this up like a prediction and let's get started. So let's start with our um, Democratic safe states. There's going to be some notable omissions. So I usually classify New Mexico as safe. Um, for this scenario, I'm not going to do that because that would not happen in a Trump best case scenario. A lot of the things that would change, I guess, in this scenario is margins, especially when it comes to the races that are a lot closer. And honestly, I'm going to talk about um, one of the big things that might happen in a Trump best case, uh, best case scenario, and that is a Trump quote-unquote silent majority. So the Trump campaign has been talking about a silent majority. And, you know, the more I think about it, the more it makes some sense. Remember, Donald Trump is kind of... A, quote-unquote, hated amongst almost a big majority of the country. Nonetheless, I mean, doesn't mean that he has supporters, because I think a lot of people do support him uh, privately, but they don't go and say it. And polling, and that's like the thing, the question that rises with the polling sometimes, that maybe it could be a little bit um, misac inaccurate because of some people saying yeah or no. And the question has been raised over the last couple of days, are these polls, like, super accurate if they're showing Biden up by, like, double-digit margins? So, I mean, not questioning that Joe Biden can't be up by double-digit margins, but it's a thing to consider. So, let's start out this map and look at our Republican likely states in a best-case scenario for Trump. I feel like in a best-case scenario for Trump, he would have fixed a lot of things in Texas. In states like Texas, I would say Iowa, Ohio, Georgia... And I think it's generally this is going to be our biggest, um, and also I think the two districts in the Trump case scenario would go by more than five points. So these states, I mean, they have very big Republican bases. Um, and I feel these states in a best case scenario slash Trump silent majority scenario, um, I feel like Donald Trump would do very well here and he'll pick up some voters quickly. And considering that his base is big already, he generally speaking only has to get a couple voters just to win the election. Um, in these states, but I feel like with um the best case scenario, if all the cards start aligning for him because they're currently are not, and that's a big thing to note. Right now, Donald Trump is at a huge disadvantage when it comes to the nationwide election. Now, does that mean that like Donald Trump has absolutely no chance of winning the presidency? No, but that he's gonna be at a disadvantage and he's gonna have to climb up a hill. Well, Joe Biden's up at the hill already. Donald Trump is still climbing up there. So we're going to start looking at this and we're going to see the election changing and it's fastly changing. A lot of these states that used to be in the lean column or likely column are safer. And some of the states that were actually were or in some states are moving back into the more contested. This is going to be a problem for the Republicans. But considering how Donald Trump campaigns and his form of campaigning, I don't think that will be a problem for him. What will be a problem is if he doesn't start campaigning differently. But in a best case scenario, I would say that, like, starting in a couple weeks, Donald Trump starts completely changing his campaign, kind of, like, to, takes Twitter down a notch and changes all these different things so his campaign looks a little better. So, in a best case scenario, like I said, these, sta um, these states have very big Republican bases. Um, in a best case scenario, just a little push. That would probably happen. The two districts, I've been saying it for a long time. They're very conservative districts. And Nebraska's in, um, second congressional district, it truly is a progressive district. But the fact of the matter is they stay home if, they're, if they don't like the candidate. If they don't have a progressive candidate that they like, they're going to stay home. So those are Republican um, likely states for this scenario. What about a Democratic likely state? I feel like some of the common likely states would probably be here. And I feel like states like New Mexico... Colorado, um, at, th at this point, I think, like, Nevada, um, but Nevada is also one of those states that could be considered lean, I would actually just put, um, those two, and actually, probably Virginia for the Democrats, I feel in the best case scenario for Trump, he could, um, narrow down the margin in Nevada, but these states, they're probably going to stay the same, um, in a best case scenario for him, and nonetheless, I feel like, um, Joe Biden still has enough voters here that even if Donald Trump has a best case scenario, there's no way to measure a best case scenario. I would probably say it's just um influx of, of voters um for the other party anywhere from around um three to five percent better 
Um, and generally speaking, considering how these states were in the likely margin, still they wouldn't go. But Nevada's probably going to be the tightest out of these, I would say, Clinton states I remember from last time. And honestly, this is going to be a very interesting race. Joe Biden has enough support in these areas that even losing 35% of the voters for from him, that's not going to affect him that much. So those are our Democratic likely states in best case scenario for Trump. Now let's go to our Republican lean states. So at this point in time, I think in the lean states for um, Republicans in a best case scenario, such silent majority scenario, would be states like Florida, North Carolina, and I would even go as far as saying state like Arizona. So as of right now, these states are leaning towards the Democratic Party. And they have very good chances of going to the Democrats in a regular scenario. Now, when we're talking about a Donald Trump best case scenario, and we're talking about a silent majority, these states come to mind. Um, first of all, I mean, Florida it has a lot of suburbs um, in some certain parts, which have been flipping, and the data has been showing that they've been voting a little bit more for the Republicans. Um, in North Carolina, you also have a very big base. And honestly, in North Carolina, a best case scenario is not what's essentially what what the total would be it's just turnout if because republicans have a very large base in north carolina if borders start flipping and if african-american turnout is high um they're probably not going to win there in north carolina so i mean in a best case scenario i would say for the republican party in this case donald trump i would say that turnout would have to be either super low or he would just have to be become popular from here to november which again the chances of that happening i mean We've seen stuff like that happen before. Um, but essentially, I mean, a best-case scenario right down for Donald Trump is not looking as bad as a best-case scenario a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, we could have made a best-case scenario for Donald Trump that he didn't even win the election. Nonetheless, I think we're getting on a path where he might start contesting some of these states that for a long time have been flipping or have been, for the last couple of months, completely retaliating against him. So... These are going to be our states, um, Arizona, North Carolina, and Florida, for the Republican Party in the lean margins. Um, what about the Democrats' lean states? I honestly feel there's only a couple. I feel like, um, honestly, a state like Nevada will go into the lean column. I feel like a state like Minnesota. I feel like a state like Michigan. And that, I would put it like that. So these states, in the best case scenario for Donald Trump, would go by those margins. Why? Well, specifically because these, um, these states... Um, they have very big Democratic bases, and they have growing Democratic bases, um, especially since a lot of the working class voters flipped. Um, not all of them, because remember, a lot of people just think that, yeah, all the people that flipped for Trump, from Obama to Trump, all of them are coming back to the Democrats. That's simply not true. A portion of them are coming back to the Democrats, which essentially is enough if you consider how big or how small the races went. But I think a lot of these areas are actually happy with the economy. If it weren't for coronavirus, these areas would be super happy with the economy. And I could even say that Donald Trump could win these outright um, without a best case scenario. But considering the fact that at this point in time, we're currently looking at a, a very weird election with coronavirus and all these different issues that are affecting our nation. Um, I feel like at this point in time, um, the Trump campaign is going to have some harder time of winning in the Midwest. Maybe as they had maybe a month ago, not a month ago, but like three months ago, or before the pandemic. I feel like, honestly, in the best case scenario, Nevada, Minnesota, and Michigan, they won't go. But I feel like the other Rust Belt states do have a chance to go. So, especially in Nevada, and um, Nevada especially, the Latino vote's going to help Donald Trump here. Yeah, for the most part, Latino vote goes to the um, Democratic Party. But, I mean, he's been gaining with the um, Latino vote, and he's been trying to. That's going to help him. Now, I feel there's many things that are going to affect the elections in these states other than the candidates and stuff like that. And I feel, honestly, that Republicans, um, they have a low chance of winning in these states. That I just feel in, in the lean margin. And I honestly feel like Donald Trump has... Like, this is just an example of how Donald Trump is up in on a uphill battle. And he's going to have to do something about it. So, those are our lean states for the Democratic Party. What are the last states? I feel the best case scenario for Donald Trump. He would win... Um, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and New Hampshire. So, guys, remember, this is the best case scenario. And I honestly feel like these areas, um, they have it in them to flip. Now, is this very highly likely that we're looking at the highest possibility of this happening? No. 
this is looking at a scenario where we're looking at someone who, if Donald Trump becomes more popular and a best case scenario, he would A, um, he would just simply appeal to these voters a lot more. You have voters in Michigan and Pennsylvania, in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, who are working class voters and they're seeing their economies grow. Um, although a lot of them re-elected uh, Democratic officials, I wouldn't personally compare statewide races to presidential races. Now, does this mean that Republicans have a hard chance of winning in these states? Yeah, but I think in the best case scenario for Donald Trump, he could pull it off. Especially how he's been kind of handling the economy, which, again, let me remind you, this is the Midwest usually votes solely on the economy or majoritarily for the economy. And the economy has been doing good. And even post-COVID, where the economy got crushed completely, we've made the, the, the we as a country, and I guess the Republican Party, because they're in government right now, they've made really good improvements. Considering the fact they're starting to get some jobs back and things like that. Yeah, but okay. Where is Donald Trump going to get hurt uh, in a best-case scenario? I think his gains will be higher in areas like the Midwest compared to the Sun Belt. The Sun Belt is going to be the, the battleground for these elections. And considering the fact that Republicans are becoming more and more unpopular in the Sun Belt and coronavirus is not helping, that's going to be an area where instead of like flipping it by a bigger margin, they're just going to flip it by a little bit. So Donald Trump's last case scenario looks a little um very, very interesting. And honestly, I think that is this completely out of the books? No. Is it highly likely to happen? Again, no. But, I mean, Donald Trump is a very interesting candidate and a very interesting politician. We've seen it in the past how he has pulled off some things. The 2016 elections and just even winning the primaries, who would have thought that? And considering how, how he's a politician, that he his campaigning strategies are very good. I mean, his rallies get a lot of support. And honestly speaking, I would personally say that Donald Trump's chances of presidency are a lot higher than people may think. So guys, at the end of the day, this is my prediction for a Trump best case scenario. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe to get notified when I post my next video. Guys, we have many interesting things coming up, so I don't want you guys to miss it. We have a very cool election night coming up soon, and there's many great things for us to, to see in this channel. Um, Turn on your post notifications if you, if you don't want to miss out those things. And yeah, so... I hope you enjoyed the video and goodbye.